hey everyone, this lesson is on non-dietary triggers of migraine headache. So we're going to talk a lot about environmental triggers along with some psychological and biological triggers of migraine headaches. But before we get into that, let's talk about migraine headaches briefly here. So migraine headaches are pulsatile and unilateral head pain that is often disabling and occurs with associated symptoms. So they are pulsatile, which means they are pounding or throbbing in nature, and they are unilateral, which means that they often occur on one side of the head as opposed to two sides of the head. And the underlying pathophysiology of migraine headaches is believed to be due to abnormal cerebral vasodilation or neuronal changes or impairments. So abnormal cerebral vasodilation means that the vasculature in your head abnormally dilates. And then there may also, again, be some changes in neuronal firing or functioning. So this is going to be a brief overview of some elements of migraine headaches. If you want more information on migraine headaches, please check my lesson on that topic. So migraine headaches may have a prodrome, which is a time which precedes or comes before the migraine itself. This occurs in a subset of patients. So not all patients will have a prodrome. Migraine headaches can occur with or without an aura, and they often have nausea and vomiting associated with the headache. There can be photophobia and phonophobia that can occur during the prodrome or as part of the aura. And photophobia is sensitivity to light and phonophobia is sensitivity to sound. And oftentimes migraine headaches can be exacerbated or worsened by physical activity and can be made better with rest and being in a dark place. But the topic of this lesson, as we mentioned before, is that migraine headaches can be initiated or triggered by a wide variety of non-dietary causes. So you can think of things like environmental triggers, so what are some non-dietary triggers of migraines? One of them is emotional stress. So I bring emotional stress up here because it may be the most significant and common trigger of migraines. Upwards of 80% report stress as a trigger of migraine headaches. Another trigger of migraines is bright lights. So bright lights, exposure to certain lights is likely a trigger for migraine headaches in some individuals. So we talked about being in a dark room helps patients with migraine headaches. So bright lights can actually trigger migraines in some individuals. And approximately one third of patients who get migraines report exposure to lights as a trigger for the migraine headaches. So again, emotional stress is probably the most significant and common trigger of migraines. Upwards of 80% report stress as a trigger. And then bright lights can trigger migraines in some individuals. Usually about a third of patients report bright lights as a trigger. We can also see some biological triggers of migraines. So the menstrual cycle in women can lead to changes in hormone levels during menstruation and ovulation that may trigger migraine headaches. And this may be the reason why female to male ratio of migraine headaches is three to one. So females outnumber males three to one, and this may be the reason. And upwards of two thirds of female patients report changes in menstrual cycle as a trigger. So it can affect a large number of women. We can also see pregnancy being a trigger of migraine headaches, as was noted in this article entitled Migraine in Pregnancy. And like the menstrual cycle, it is due to hormonal changes during pregnancy. And it does seem that there's an increased frequency of migraines during the first trimester, especially the first trimester, but then there's some reductions in overall frequency later in pregnancy. And the interesting thing is that although there is some increased frequency of migraines during the first trimester, later on in pregnancy, it actually seems that pregnancy can be beneficial for individuals who have migraines in general. So pregnancy itself may reduce overall frequency of migraine headaches in those who suffer from migraine headaches. So pregnancy only seems to trigger migraines more often in the first trimester, but later on it improves migraine headaches. And it appears that pregnancy triggers aura without headaches as well. Now, the next set of triggers of migraines come from this article entitled Analysis of Trigger Factors in Episodic Migrainers Using a Smartphone Headache Diary Applications. So one trigger of migraines that was noted in that article is sleep deprivation. So sleep deprivation has been reported as a migraine trigger in about a quarter of migraine patients. And sleep deprivation is known to cause tension type headaches as well. Tension type headaches are that band-like pattern around the head. So they often are bilateral, a band across the head. So not like migraines, which are oftentimes unilateral and pounding in nature. So it appears that fatigue likely plays a role here. And on the opposite side of the spectrum is excessive sleep. Excessive sleep may also lead to migraine headaches. And again, this 
is a possible trigger. So it may cause or may trigger migraine headaches. But if it does trigger migraine headaches, it only triggers in a very, very small percentage of patients. Roughly 2.4% of migraine patients indicated that excessive sleep triggered their migraine. So more likely that sleep deprivation causes or triggers migraine headaches, about a quarter of patients. And then excessive sleep in some individuals, very, very rarely, it may trigger migraine headaches as well. Odors are also a trigger of migraines. As was noted in this article entitled, Odorant Substances That Trigger Headaches in Migraine Patients. So certain scents are thought to be triggers of migraines, and odors may trigger a migraine within only a few minutes of exposure, so can trigger migraines very quickly. Some examples include perfume, nail polish, cleaning products, paint, and gasoline. We can also see changes in weather being triggers of migraines as well, so changes in atmospheric pressure. And this comes from the article entitled, What Turns on a Migraine? A Systematic Review of Migraine Precipitating Factors. So changes in weather is reported as a trigger in roughly 39% of migraine patients. And it really is a general term, weather changes, but there is an association with strong winds as well. So strong winds may lead to triggering of migraines more specifically than just weather changes. So again, odors can be a trigger of migraines and can trigger migraine within only a few minutes. And then changes in weather, changes in atmospheric pressure, and particularly strong winds may trigger migraine headaches in some individuals. We can also see that exercise and activity can trigger migraine headaches. As was noted in this article entitled, Migraineurs with Exercise Triggered Attacks Have a Distinct Migraine. So exercise was reported as a migraine trigger in 25 to 30% of migraine cases, so a quarter to a third of patients. And when we say exercise and activity, it's usually physical activity or some type of exertion. Sexual activity can also be a trigger in some migraine patients as well. Usually a very small percentage of patients report this as a trigger, roughly 5%. We can also see traveling or motion simulators as triggers of migraines as well, as was noted in this article we talked about before. So traveling appears to be a significant trigger of migraines in some individuals. And motion simulation may be a trigger as well. And this all seems to tie in with motion sickness. So it was shown that individuals who have migraines, especially migraines that are triggered by traveling, have a lot more motion sickness than other individuals. So again, exercise and activity can be a trigger of migraines. And then we can also see traveling or some type of motion simulator as a possible trigger as well. So some other environmental triggers of migraines include heat or excessive heat. This can be related to weather changes. So if there's very hot weather, that may be a reason why weather changes is noted as a trigger of migraines. And heat is reported as a trigger in approximately 30% of cases. And then another environmental trigger of migraines is noise. So this comes from the article entitled, What Turns on a Migraine? A Systematic Review of Migraine Precipitating Factors. So noises and sounds are likely one of the most common triggers of migraine headaches. And it's reported as a trigger in roughly 56% of patients. So again, it seems that heat and noise are important environmental triggers of migraine headaches. So if you want to learn more about dietary triggers of migraines, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.